first of all, uh, petroleum uh, products are actually managed by Ministry of Energy and Mineral Development. And uh, they are managed through an Act of Parliament which was put in place in 2003. And this uh, Act arose from um, a energy policy with a, an objective of uh, having adequate and reliable supply of petroleum products in the country. That policy was uh, enacted in 20, uh, 2002. And that, that uh, uh, when the act was put in place, this act from 2003 remained redundant until regulations were put in place in 2009. And it was then after 2009 that the implementation of the act was uh, effected. And this act uh, enabled the regulation of uh, importation of petroleum products, uh, regulation of establishment of petrol stations, uh, regulation on the quality of uh, petroleum products that we put in the market. And this is actually enshrined in this act, which, was, which is under the Ministry of Energy uh, and Mineral Resources. As we talk now, uh, the consumption of uh, petroleum products is increasing by an average of about 7% annually. And uh, currently, our average consumption of uh, petroleum products stands at about 185 million liters of petroleum products. That's a huge, huge amount of petroleum products that get into the country. But I also need to remind everyone that the petroleum, this, this sector is fully liberalized. We have over 56 oil marketing companies registered in Uganda. And there are over 1,312 pet licensed petrol stations across the country. That's quite a huge number. 56 oil companies and then over 1,300 uh, licensed oil uh, petrol stations scattered all over the country. And this, is, this actually now calls for uh, strong regulations and an oversight on the uh, mushrooming of petrol stations. What is making it attractive is people realize in dealing with petroleum products, there is money. There are profits. Everybody wants to get to, uh, to an area where there, is, there are profits. So there is an attraction because of those profits to many people running into establishment of petrol stations. And you'll find petrol stations uh, uh, within a short distance, within maybe a one kilometer in some areas, you get more than five petrol stations within one kilometer. For example, in Kampala, you'll find in that radius of a one kilometer, you get three, uh, three to five petrol stations. And this, even in some areas, you'll find a single pump station established. This is, it increases the danger of uh, fire breakouts. It increases the danger on congestion on the roads. If there are petrol stations within a short distance, it creates traffic jams. But we also have to recognize now the demand of uh, petroleum products has gone up because of the border borders. Border borders will, there are, there are millions of border borders, border borders uh, all over the country. So that calls for regulation of establishment of uh, petrol stations in the country. Now, how do we get, how do we regulate it? First of all, there should be a clear application system for uh, opening up stations. 
So, in their application, although the Ministry of uh, Energy and Mineral Development is overall res uh, responsible for establishment and regulations of these petrol stations, we have actually delegated it to the local governments. The local governments take responsibility through their uh, fiscal planning departments and units to actually uh, ensure that the, uh, the petrol stations are approved and properly cited at a local government level. So the ministry has delegated that to local governments. And it's mainly the planning divisions uh, which take responsibility, fiscal planning uh, committees of local governments that take a responsibility. Now, if you are to, uh, if you get interested as an individual to get, um, uh, get into this business, the starting procedure is you should have your application written to your area fiscal planning unit. They take responsibility because they know the land uses of their localities and they are the ones whom you apply to uh, establish a, a petrol station. When you place in your application to uh, a fiscal planning committee of your area, they usually, we expect them to go and inspect the site which you are proposing for your uh, petrol station. And arising from uh, the land use uh, policy in that area, the land use plan in that area, you will be guided in case it is a place for a market, they will tell you no, this area is not suitable. In case it is an area for residential, they will tell you no, it is not suitable. So you are actually guided according to the land use plan of a specific area. Uh, if this, uh, the area is suitable for a petrol station, uh, you will be asked to actually display that site where you have selected. You will be asked to display a notice in that area that you are proposing to put a petrol station in that area. And that notice should remain there for 14 days to enable the neighbors and stakeholders to actually view and make comments about a petrol station which is coming in their area. These are the guidelines for, for, for establishment of a petrol station. So you should put a notice in that area. It should run for 14 days. And if there is no objection, then you, 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 we expect you to go to the next level. The area fiscal planning division or unit or committee should then guide you that the next step, if the area is suitable, the neighbors don't have any problem, then you apply for uh, environmental and social pact uh, assessment by NEMA. How suitable is it for a petrol station? Although the neighbors were, have accepted it and the fiscal committee, fiscal planning committee has accepted it, you should go to the next level, environmental impact assessment. Now, when you, are, uh, you have done that, the, the, the NEMA now takes the responsibility to produce a report of the uh, environmental and social impact assessment. They produce a report, and this report, once you get it, is, it will be shared with the, the various agencies that take responsibility for uh, establishment of petrol stations. It means Ministry of Energy will also be notified. Ministry of Local Government will be notified about the social impact. Uh, and once, once the social env environmental and social uh, impact assessment report is approved, uh, you'll be guided to seek now uh, to have architectural and uh, architectural drawings and plans in that area. They have got to be approved again 
by the construction uh, division in that local area. You need to have your plans approved. Once the plans are approved and you are issued with a, uh, that stamp by that authority, then you can now come to Minister of uh, 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 Energy and uh, Mineral Development to issue you with a, uh, a permit to develop your petrol station. That's when the ministry comes back now. These other ones are doing the preparatory work. But now when you have all, you have gone through all these various developments, you have your building plans, you have the name approvals, you have fiscal and planning development committee approval. When you come here with that, we now go to inspect the site and issue you with the, the building permit to start construction of your petrol station. Once we have issued you that permit, we actually don't take responsibility to supervise your building. You go back to the uh, construction committee, they will now supervise your building of the petrol station. And once you have finished and you have got a certificate of occupancy from the construction uh, uh, department, you come back to Ministry of uh, Energy and Mineral Development and we finally issue you with a, an operation permit for you to run a station. But before you do this, I need to highlight what are, are the requirements if, 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 for a location of a petrol station. Some of these requirements, which are uh, in, the, in the guidelines, uh, for example, the dimensions of a petrol station. You should not put a station into a, a small plot. You should have a minimum of 900 square meters. The space which you take for a petrol station should be not less than 900 uh, square meters. And when you are doing that, the area where the vehicles should turn around and so on, the frontage should not be less than 30 meters to allow the vehicles to turn around. This, uh, when it, while you are doing that, if you get that plot, that plot should not be, uh, should not be less than 200 meters from a roundabout because we want to avoid congestion should be more than 200 meter 200 meters from a junction 200 meters from any intersections of the road you must it must be very clear such that there is clearance in case a vehicle is coming from the, there should be no uh, no no obstacles uh, to enable the vehicles to turn uh, it should also be, the fuel station should not be located in uh, environmental, uh, environmentally sensitive ecosystems such as the national parks, lakes, forests or rivers. It should be not close to those areas which are sensitive, sensitive ecosystems. It should also not be located uh, in uh, not less than 200 kilometers, uh, 200 meters from uh, heavily densely residential areas, you should not put it less than 200 meters from areas which are densely populated. We should try to make it as clear as possible because of the dangers of fires. The new fuel station should not also be located less than 100 meters from an industry or a factory. Keep it away from the factories. It should be more than 100 meters from uh, a location of a factory. The minimum distance uh, to a road junction 
should not be less than 200 meters in a junction. Uh, the distance between a new fuel station and other or on either side of the road along the expressways should not be less than five kilometers. Especially in a, uh, for example, the expressway, if we are going to Entebbe. Distance between the two petrol stations should not be less than five kilometers. Because that's an area of high speed. And we would wish to have a very clear uh, a, passage of the way uh, when you are on the highways. All these specifications have, are now coming out on the new guidelines which we are developing with the, the Ministry of Lands uh, and Urban Planning. These guidelines, you can get them once they have been released. These are the new guidelines to strengthen uh, how we manage the, petrol, the siting of the petrol stations. And if you have got uh, the petrol station, there are other requirements which you need to put in place. For example, it's very important we are dealing with the flammable materials. There is petrol, there is diesel. In a petrol station, you also get a liquid petroleum products. All of them are flammable. And you are coming with a uh, uh, you, you have got to take care of the, the, how you manage in case there is an outbreak of fire. Every petrol station should have at least firefighting equipment. There should be at least a firefighting, uh, a fire extinguisher in every petrol station. In every petrol station, there should be sand because sand helps to kill any fires. There should be a clear area where those who are inhabiting the petrol station can run to in case of an outbreak. And every petrol station should endeavor to have a greenery, some grass within uh, a petrol station. All these are highlighted in our uh, in the in the guidelines and then there should be clear writings don't smoke switch off your telephone switch off your engine while you are in the petrol station so when all this is done then we come to management of a petrol station the fuel attendants must be trained the managers must be trained uh, in most petrol stations, there are service bays. The people who are responsible for servicing the vehicles in a petrol station must be trained. And there must be adequate security provided in a petrol station. These are some of the things you need, human resource. And then those other things, the fire extinguishers. Uh, we know this is quite a mouthful and it's very difficult to do this. Then we have to look at your setup of your petrol station. There must be, a petrol station must be adequately set, should be free of encumbrances to make sure that there is, uh, is a flow of even air, because in case of anything of fumes, they should be able to be carried away. There should be little congestion on traffic. There should be, it should not be a, hub, a place, a hub for a lot of human beings doing other things in a petrol station because those ones increase the danger of, uh, of, of accidents in case the place is congested. Now, we'll have a provision of in case of breach, what penalties could be implemented on those who are who break the, the guidelines. We are going to be very strict on the regulations and in the, our new guidelines we shall also be providing for uh, the commissioning of petrol stations.
in case a petrol station was here and you want to turn that premise into another thing, how can you rehabilitate it such that we remove the hazards of a petrol station that you have on that site? So, uh, after we have done all this, I've talked about the fiscal petrol station. We also go to monitor the quality of the products that you have in a petrol station. We work with the, the National Bureau of Standards, uh, first of all, to check the quality of the fuel that you disperse. These fuels, we mark them right from entry into the country. We need to, we actually look at the fuel, the petroleum products that are entering the country by company and we mark them. Every uh, company has got a mark on their fuel as the fuel gets in to enable us to follow the quality of uh, the petroleum product from entry point up to the time it comes out of uh, the, the fuel pump. That is to ensure quality, consistency of the quality of the fuel that we are running, the petroleum product which is getting out of your pump. With the National Bureau of Standards, we actually go to monitor uh, the pumps. They are, those pumps uh, are managed by uh, National Bureau of Standards to make sure that the fuel which is given out is actually the right amount of fuel, the right, the right quantity. So we monitor that and we monitor the quality of the, the fuel regularly and that's a responsibility of Ministry of uh, Energy and Mineral Development. We take charge of uh, petroleum products that enter the country and we monitor it, supervise, and also the setting of the petrol stations, as I've given uh, now. And we are mandated to do that by uh, the Petroleum, uh, petroleum Supply Act of 2003. The petrol stations should be not less than one kilometer. If you are running on the highways, you are, say, running from here to Jinja, the petrol station should be not less than one kilometer. But if you are on an expressway like in Tebe, it should not be less than five kilometers. But then that is on one side. But a petrol station on the opposite side, if it is an expressway, can should not be more than should not be less than 200 meters from the next one. But on opposite sides of the road. You should not have a petrol station, two petrol stations just opposite to each other. No. There should be some distance to allow in case of accidents. There should be a gap for the petrol stations.